Let's see what point the wrapping function evaluated at pi over 6 maps to. Okay. Well, pi over 6 would be about right here. So here's our wrapping function. There's a distance pi over 6. And this will map to the point C, which has coordinates x, y. Here's our point A, which has coordinates 1, 0. And here's our point B, which has points 0, 1. Just like in the proof or the explanation, coming up with the coordinates, wrapping function evaluated at pi over 4. Well, we need to come up with some arcs that are equal to each other or congruent to each other so that we can come up with some type of equation uh, that relates the segments that joins those endpoints. Well, if you look at this, I know that this is uh, pi over 6, and then this will be uh, 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. So like this distance right here is 2 pi over 6, because if you take pi over 2 minus pi over 6, that's 2 pi over 6 left over, which is pi over 3. And then I need to come up with another arc that has this length, 2 pi over 6. Well, I already have pi over 6 right here, and if I just make a point on this side of the axis, which is symmetrical about this point. I now have a length, an arc length here, of 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Let's call this point, say, point D. Now this point is symmetric about a point C, based on what we've learned earlier, a wrapping function positive value, wrapping function negative value. They have the same x coordinate, they have opposite y coordinates. So the uh, point D has coordinates x, negative y. Now, if we look at this, this arc has length 2 pi over 6. This arc has length 2 pi over 6. So then our, our arcs are congruent, the measures are equal, our segments that join these arc lengths, or the endpoints of arc lengths are congruent, so therefore their lengths are equal. So we can just go ahead and right away say that BC, length BC, is equal to length CD. Now that we have equal lengths, we can use our distance formula because these are endpoints and they have coordinates. We can see what happens and come up with some type of relationship that involves x and y. So we can eliminate a variable in our equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Let's see what happens. So bc equals the square root of, uh, let's go x minus 0, y squared plus y minus 1 squared. Simplify that down a little bit. And we have x squared plus y minus 1, y squared. Length cd. Okay, C, D. Let's make these x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm going to have x minus x squared plus y minus negative y. Y squared. Simplify. x minus x, 0 squared plus uh, y minus negative y, so it would be y plus y, quantity squared. 2y point squared. Okay, we know that length C, uh, BC equals length CD. Length BC is equal to this quantity. Length CD is equal to this quantity. Uh, now let's see if we can come up with a relationship involving x and y so we can use that relationship to eliminate an x or y in our other equation for the equation of the circle. Okay, square both sides, x squared. And then I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to expand this right away. Oops, that should be minus. minus 2y 
plus 1 equals then 4y squared. Now if you look at this, you notice that you have an x squared and then you have y squareds and y's over here. Well, I would solve this equation for x squared because I know in the other equation I have x squared plus y squared equals 1. And I can directly substitute x squared equals some stuff. Okay, solve this for x squared. x squared equals 3y squared uh, plus 2y and minus 1. Now we have an expression in terms of x squared. I'm going to substitute that into our uh, x squared plus y squared equals 1 equation. And we have now 3y squared plus 2y minus 1 plus y squared equals 1. Now it looks like my y squared terms are not going to cancel out. Um, so let's move everything to one side, combine my terms, and see if we can use your quadratic formula or if this factors. 4y squared plus 2y minus 2 equals 0. I can factor out 2 and divide by that. And so 2y squared plus y minus 1 equals 0. It looks like this can be factored. Okay, I'm going to move over here. And I have my factors 2y, uh, y equals 0. See here, we got to negative 1, so plus or minus 1. That looks like uh, plus 1 here. Minus 1 here. So we're left with y equals uh, negative 1 or y equals 1 half. Well, we know since we're in quadrant 1, y cannot equal negative 1. So y has to equal 1 half. So our y quarter of our point is 1 half. Equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. to then solve for x. So it will be 1 fourth, so x squared then would equal 3 fourths. Take the plus or minus square root. We know we can't use the negative square root because we're in, we're in quadrant 1. So it's the positive square root. Then x equals root 3 over 2 after you take the square root of 4 and square root of 3. So now then our point x, y. So then we've calculated the wrapping function, evaluated the pi over 6, maps the point x, y, which we've calculated to be root 3 over 2, 1 half. Therefore, the cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. The sine of pi over 6 is 1 half.